When you first get your sports action camera out of the box for the very first time, you could either flip through the manual or you could just start pressing buttons and in no time at all, you'll be riding along filming in beautiful high definition. Hmm. However, there are loads of different settings at your fingertips. You just need to know what they are and then when and why you should use them. Now, the first thing you might want to look at is frame rate. Now that refers to the number of images that your camera takes per second. The higher the frame rate, the better the quality of your video, at least when shooting action, and particularly key for cycling, the better the quality of your slow-mos. Now we tend to shoot in 60 frames per second. But it's not always quite as simple as that because a lower frame rate will give you a better quality image in lower light conditions. So if you're filming slower action shots in darker conditions, try knocking it down to 30 frames a second. And you also need to think about how long you want to shoot for as well. It should probably go without saying that 60 frames per second will take up much more space on your memory card than 30 frames per second. So if you're going to film your entire commute, for example, then you're going to have to drop down the frame rate. Generally, frame rate will have a knock-on effect on the resolution you can use as well. Resolution being the number of pixels in your video image. The higher the resolution, meaning the better the quality. Now, you might find that you can't separate resolution from frame rate, but do bear in mind that if you want to film in HD, you're going to need 1080 or 720. Now, the last aspect of your image capture that you might want to look at is your field of view setting. Now, we use a wider field of view when the camera is either affixed to your bike or on yourself. You can see here that a wide field of view gives us a much nicer image. It increases the feeling of speed and it also increases the stability of the image. Now, the narrow field of view is a setting you'd only want to use really in the more traditional sense, so when you're off the bike and actually holding the camera. Built-in mics on sports action cameras are pretty good for most uses, but what you can do, if needed, is to fit an external mic. It might be to minimise wind noise or just to get top quality audio. If that's the case, what you might need to do is get an external mic and then a micro USB to female 3.5mm lead. You need to bear in mind that when selecting any of the aforementioned options that they will have an effect on how much footage you can shoot or how long you can actually shoot for. And we'd recommend choosing a card that's the maximum your camera can take. And we generally use 32 gig cards or 16 gig cards. It's important as well to get a card that's fast enough for your camera. Now they come in different classes which refers to how quickly they can transfer data. And most cameras generally require quite a fast card. We use class 10 because that's just how we roll. We certainly do. And the most popular type of card is a micro SD card. So it's pretty handy if you can get an adapter, so micro SD to SD, so work for when you're transferring your images later on. Most new sports action cameras have some kind of built-in connectivity, whether it's AMP Plus, so that you can sync the device with your power meter and so forth, or wireless, so you can actually control the camera remotely from your mobile phone. And both these things are absolutely brilliant. So if you have them, make sure that you take advantage of them. Of course, shooting stuff is really only part of getting the most out of your camera. Editing is absolutely key. Now, most computers will come with something like Windows Movie Maker or iMovie. And there's loads of tutorials online, on YouTube particularly, that will help you get the most out of these editing systems. Try adding music, playing with different transitions, effects, and also colour. Adjusting your footage to make it as impressive as possible. But don't go too mad. Simple and watchable is the way to go. If you're using a Garmin Verb like we do, then they actually have their own editing system that allows you, well, first and foremost, to edit the footage that you just shot, but perhaps more importantly, to overlay real-time data from your ride. Yeah, power, heart rate, route, and cadence can all be overlaid on the screen using a series of customizable options. Now, you might not necessarily want to use all that data on all the videos, but it does provide a hook to inform and entertain your viewers. Yeah, in fact, were you hooked and entertained by this video up here? Dan and Matt analysing slipstreaming and using some cheeky real-time data overlays. Indeed. Or if you just want to see a video about filming your rides that's perhaps a little bit more basic than this one, then we've also got one. You can get to that just by clicking down there. Yeah, and to subscribe to GCN to even more cool videos just like this. How about clicking on Lloydie there? And he had another video. Looks like he's fertling with a bike there, doesn't it? Fertling? What? That was pretty good, didn't he? That sounds a bit dodgy. Or mechanic -y. definitely. I hope we uh, didn't see any dirty. footage of him fertling. Don't. Sorry. Right, sorry about that. Oh, sorry. Mate. Sorry, sorry, mate. sorry, sorry, sorry. Really sorry, mate. Sorry, buddy. Hold on a minute. Um <laughs> sorry. I'm really sorry about my 
Oh, sorry, mate. It's sorry. Right. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, mate. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Just messing with you, mate. No, I can't remember what it was. <laughs> so check mine as well. <laughs> sorry. All right. <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry, I got a bit of a bum up there. Sorry. <laughs>